Oh look, another laser. Now what could possibly be better or worse about this one? Grab yourself a brew, let's go find out. All right, so this is Longer's B1 30 watt laser. Interestingly, it says the optical output is between 33 and 36 watts. Inside here is six six watt lasers. They're all coupled together with mirrors to create one laser beam. But in doing so, you're gonna get a little bit of loss of optical power. So I think 33 is realistically where it's at. But this model looks suspiciously exactly the same as the ACMA model. The only difference is this is under a thousand dollars. Now, previously we reviewed the Longer Ray 5, which had its own offline controller. The B1 doesn't have that, it might do in future, but it doesn't come with one. It does have an SD card slot, it's a one button operation, and because it's an ESP32 motherboard, we can then operate it using Wi-Fi. So we've got some safety features like this emergency stop button, and you've got an isolation key. This machine comes with air assist and is tethered to the machine. This is basically an aquarium pump. And we've got 30 liters per minute of airflow, 0.030 MPA, and is 18 watts of power. The air intake is located on the bottom and looks like we can put a little filter in that. It's got little rubberized feet to keep it quiet. We'll test to see how loud this is. So longer are making some bold claims about this machine. Now previously with the ACMA model, we cut 40 millimeter acrylic. As longer says that their machine can do 50 millimeters. So we'll test that. It also says it's happy to cut 25 millimeter wood and that this machine moves at 36,000 millimeters per minute. To put that into perspective, the X-Tool D1, which is a far more expensive model, does it at 24,000 millimeters per minute. Now this machine's also got a very impressive cutting bed size at 440 by 450 millimeters also bigger than the X tool. Now we've got my standard test board to test it against all the other models. As you can see, we are running out of room, but we'll use this board and then we'll test a tiny square just to make sure these are the same. This is nine millimeter hardwood ply. That's 8.69 on the verniers. But I've also got some other materials to test that some of you will find very interesting. So we've gone on laser tools on Lightburn and created this cut test file, going from 200 to 600 millimeters per minute and from 60 to 100% power. Now, ironically, I'm gonna be using the X-Tool honeycomb from my D1, despite the fact it doesn't fit my D1. That's because X-Tool didn't supply me with the aftermarket standoffs that you need for it. And not only the longer model has plenty of room, but the feet have adjustable heights. On the side of the laser, we've got this tiny little drop down gauge, a little locking pin here that we'll have to undo, drop the laser, and then re tighten up. And you see that it's very small, and this is, flip that back up. And then we'll turn it on and home the laser. Homing, as you can see, is quite slow. All right, let's give it a test then. So we're showing about 72 decibels. Well, it moved back to home pretty quick after that. Let's see how it's done. So as I suspected, it's done exactly the same as ACMA. It loves 200 millimeters per minute. Let's see if it'll do 250 with a little square on the other one. All right, let's see how that turned out. Ooh. Yeah, 250 millimeters per minute is cutting beautifully. This is a 20 millimeter square on the design with a zero kerth width, and it's come out at 19.71 by 19.78, very square. So now we're gonna test 25 millimeter Paulonia wood. And for the very best cut, I've set it to 2000 millimeters per minute. We'll see how many passes it takes to cut. Right, I think that's enough at 40 passes. Let's see how it's done. So that's okay, but not quite as good as the ACMA so far. I think there are two things we can do to improve that cut. So I've detached the pump and added my compressor line. This is gonna deliver far more air at a much higher pressure, roughly 20 PSI. And I've also lowered the laser so it's just sitting off the material, hoping to increase the focal length. All right, so let's see how well that does now. All right, so that was 30 passes. Cut all the way through, but still some excessive charring in my opinion. All right, so here's the 40 mil bit of acrylic. Let's see if we can cut this at 50 mil length and then cut that after. So I didn't quite bring it to the front. Let me turn it around. That has definitely gone all the way through. I've gone a lot slower at 100 millimeters per minute. So which one of these is closest to 50 mil? 49.74, 50.25, we'll use that piece. Turn it that way. All right, let's see how that does.
Right, let's see. Wow. Oh my days, that is a really clean cut. So they weren't joking, and that is very precise. Compare that to this Acma bit. You can see we've got some waving on the Acma bit. That, that's as good as anything. So someone said previously, why would this be useful? Surely using a router or a bandsaw would be much quicker. Well, I would agree, but the thing is, is if you want to do really fine details, then that's where a laser comes in. Being less than half a millimeter, you can get some precision on the go. That was a lot of passes though, that was 22 passes. So in the last video, I made this using the D1. Let me just show you in the sun a minute. So look at the precision on that, and that glossy finish is done using resin. So one of my faithful long-term subscribers actually said in the comment section, Josh, I miss the days when you actually made stuff rather than reviewing these lasers. And I get it, I get it, I get where you're coming from. In the meantime, why don't I meet you halfway on this one? Let's build a table, and we'll do a bit of blacksmithing, shall we? So to create something half decent in a very short amount of time, I've employed AI for assistance. The AI came up with this design and then I've amended it using some magic on Lightburn. If you're interested in this, I'll definitely do a full tutorial on how to do something like this yourself. This took me 15 minutes to create and according to Lightburn, only 19 minutes to cut. So let's get a little bit of wood and uh, see what we can do. Right, I'm using a larger sheet of plywood. Instead of using the honeycomb, I'm just putting down a few washers to give me a bit of space off the table. Slip this under the machine. This is the massive benefit of these adjustable feet. I've got one back foot that's on the sheet and three that are off. So I can basically lower these down to the thickness of the board. Looks fairly good. Okay, I think we're ready to make the first cut. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that is awesome. So this is the positive. We've got to cut the negative now. I think I'm going to slot all those bits back into this part so I don't lose anything. So this time around, I haven't got a fancy dark wood to do the negative. Instead, I'm going to use the blowtorch and burnish this all up. There we go. That's nice and even. All right, let's cut this out. Well, I think that's come out all right. Question is, does it all fit together okay? All right, so what I have under this is 12 millimeter or half inch board. So I'm gonna assemble this together and then I'm gonna glue it down to this. And then using my router, I'll then cut the thing out. First thing I'm gonna do is turn this over. And now I can very gradually start assembling everything together. So as you may know from previous episodes, we've adjusted the kerf width. So it's a very tight fit. So definitely a hammer job. Right then, let's forge those legs.
So hopefully you're still with me. If so, whilst we're waiting for that to cure, I've got some subscriber suggested materials to try. That is stone and leather. Okay, let's see how that works. All right. All right, it's got a lot of loose debris on it. If I brush that off a minute. Do you know what? I am amazed at how deep that's etched into there. Now it's come out of these little funny lines there. That's because I used an offset fill, which means that the laser head kind of spirals around rather than going side to side. So I think I should have done the side to side more because I didn't realize it would cut in that deep. So that was using 1,500 millimeters per minute, 100% power. Do you know what? I'm gonna test this again and put an inscription on the back, I think. Right, so that has kind of blown me away a little bit. How deep is that etching? All right, so that's half a millimeter deep at 2000 millimeters per minute. And I actually forgot to turn the air assist on on this time, which is a big no-no. You must never do that. You must always have air assist on. I mean, this laser can do a full-size gravestone. I know that sounds morbid, or even stone plaques. I mean, Honestly, that has opened up a huge amount of opportunities. I'm gonna be getting me some more stones. So a few years back, I managed to acquire all these leather samples. This one here is a three millimeter thick waxed leather. It's waxed on both sides. This is a two millimeter piece with just the wax on one side. I've even got pink leather. Of course, that's a lovely shade, isn't it? Two mil. And FYI, I'm actually developing a small leather product, which I'll be making available soon. But anyway, for other leather crafters, let me see if this is any good for you. So we'll start with this three mil thick double waxed piece. Now for very clean cuts, I think 2000 millimeters per minute will work nicely. We'll just do a number of passes if we haven't gone through straight away. And I'm using these very strong neodymium magnets to hold it down with. Okay, so let's try that. Right, this was me messing it up. That was four passes, that was three passes. I tried four as a guesstimate and then I saw that it dropped on the third, so let's get that out and have a look. There we are, not bad at all, I don't think. Let's try a little engraving just here. And how about we do it at its fastest speed, 36,000 millimeters per minute, 100% power. So although that worked really well, um, I can honestly say that was definitely not going that fast. There are definitely settings for acceleration, which might be quite low. I'll need to experiment on that a bit further. Because although at some point it might be going 36,000 millimeters per minute, the braking and accelerating is what's gonna slow it down. All right, let's try this two mil light leather with this nice dark tanning on it. Well, I think that's worked better. Yeah, very nice. So that was 20,000 millimeters per minute and three passes at 2,000 millimeters per minute to cut. And that took exactly one minute and two seconds to do. So if you'd like to get one of these, you can win this one for a fiver. All these machines that I receive, I've been raffling them off. So far, Ken Stone won the Anycubic Cobra Neo. We also raised 272 pounds for the Samaritans Trust. And also Jeff Peacock, who won the 20 watt Long Array 5. And that also raised 936 pounds for the Turkey Design. Disaster appeal. Now this time, I'm gonna be fully honest, I'm not doing it for charity. What I'm trying to do is recuperate my expenses so I can give you guys a genuine review. The five quid, this could be yours, but also I've pestered longer for some discounts for this in the description. All right, let's check on that table. All right then, moment of truth. That is a much better view out here in the sunshine. And as you can see, the majority of this looks amazing. Yet this guy decided to go full Jurassic Park on me. Uh, it's my fault, really. I should have made like a proper cover. But such is life when you're rushing. So yes, this is a very small coffee table. But if we wanted to say do a big dining room table, there are ways that we can get around that. In fact, that's something I'd like to try in another video. Now there's lots of things I don't like about this table because I had to rush it. But there are definitely things that I could improve on it. Which leads me to this machine. Has this 
this been rushed to keep up with the competition? And are there bad points for me to say about it? My first issue is that the air assist it came with, I don't believe is very good. To be honest, all of them on these machines have not been as good as a compressor line. So if you're thinking about getting the most out of one of these commercially, get yourself a compressor. Just know that that's an extra cost. Now to save money, we've got these cheap limit switches. Now I don't know if it's to do with those, but the homing doesn't seem to be accurate. We take this leather piece, for example, you can see right there, I tried to cut the same square out three times and every time it was misaligned. It could well possibly be that it's something to do with the programming because once it's completed a cut it goes back to its place of origin and then when you tell it to go again it's kind of like jumped a millimeter and it's done that consistently three times. That may be something to fix in the software but I don't really know. If you're more experienced than I am let me know what you think about that. Now I moaned at Xtool for leaving the little aerial in the way. To be fair it's a bit too harsh because most of the other brands as you can see leave all their controllers right in the way. So if you want to put big boards going this way, these are always going to be a problem. I don't think it's very difficult to just lift that up a little bit. We could probably re-bolt it ourselves, but Longer should really think about that for future models. Now it's been commented before, but having the plug sockets on top like this, one, they become a bit of a dust trap, and two, it's no good for the wires to be stuck up like this constantly, because as you can see, they're bending, and that's where you're going to get a fault in the wire. Now behind this tape is a fire sensor, and you can probably guess why I've taped it off. Some of the, you know, keeps getting triggered by daylight, which can be very frustrating, especially if you can't home it properly. Now, I don't know why they've put this cable connection externally like this. Maybe they ran out of room, but all these little pins here are exposed. So if something was to short across those, you could possibly damage your machine. Just a little bit of resin or glue on top of that would make a big difference. So on this model, you've got these standard roller wheels. Now the 200 pound more expensive models use linear bearings, which are obviously gonna last a lot longer than these will. So you've gotta be aware that these wear out over time. You'll have to replace them. They are very cheap to replace and as they wear out you can adjust the locking nut. Now it seems to be made very solid but if you're going to attempt the high speeds that you might get a bit of wobble out of that. But realistically it's performed just as well as all the other lasers and probably next year there'll be even bigger modules to put on these. The things you must invest in also is a cover and extraction because all the dust and fumes that you're creating is going to harm your health and too much exposure to that laser is going to ruin your eyesight forever. I would say it's worth getting the proper glasses as well not the ones that come with these. Whew, well, I really hope that's answered your questions. But if you valued any of this video, then please let me know in the comment section. Like and subscribe, and it makes me able to do more of these things. So how about you guys stop watching YouTube now and get out there, forge for yourself a life worth living. I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.